The following show is brought to you in part by Not Me in Arlington, Massachusetts. Not Me is a nonprofit organization with a mission to promote, advance, and unify self defense education and training for at risk populations. Visit Not Me at www.not me.org. From the world headquarters of BaseNet Internet Television, with reports from Arlington and Boston, Massachusetts, to Los Angeles, New York, San Francisco, and everywhere in between, you're watching After Dark with Allison Lee. I'm Gene White. And now join me in welcoming our host, Allison Lee. Thanks, Gene, and welcome everyone to After Dark. I'm your host, Allison Lee. Before we get started with today's show, I'd like to thank its original host, Una Farron, and its second host, currently BaseNet TV's Senior National News Coordinator, Holly Hurley. They both did wonderful jobs hosting this show, and there are certainly some big shoes to fill. I'd also like to give a special thank you to our announcer, Jean White, who is back with us once again. As in the tradition of After Dark, we will continue to bring you, the viewer, all the best coverage of news, entertainment, and stories that are of interest to you. So thanks once again for being a loyal viewer of this show. And if you're new to the show, welcome. Now, let's see what's happening in our corner of the world, after dark. Our first story today brings us to an annual charity event right here in Boston, the Scooper Bowl, an annual three-day all-you-can-eat ice cream festival in City Hall Plaza. Sponsored by the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, the Scooper Bowl is celebrating its 30th anniversary. And reporting from the Scooper Bowl, we have our New England correspondent, Jill Hindley. Jill? Thanks, Allison. I'm here at the Scooper Bowl in City Hall Plaza for our 2012 event, the Jimmy Fund event, and it is so much fun here. It's a little bit cloudy today, a little bit cool. As you can see, people are wearing coats even though it's June, but it is such a fun event. It's the largest all-you-can-eat ice cream festival in the nation, and there's over 30 flavors here to try, and people, young and old alike, come here. They get their spoons when they walk in and then they can try any sort of flavor. Each ice cream vendor actually brings four flavors. It's really a neat event because all the funds raised here at the Jimmy Fun Scooper Bowl go to Dana Farber for cancer research. So it's a really great event for ice cream lovers and for the charity as well. Last year in 2011, 50,000 people attended the Jimmy Fun Scooper Bowl. I'm here with Peter from the Franklin Elementary School in Newton, and he brought a group in from an after-school program. Is this your first year that you guys come into the Scooper Bowl? They've come. This is the first show I've come. I think you guys came last year, right? I think we've gone to the Scooper Bowl ever since the Plasha has been open. Yeah, I think, I think he's right. I think they come every year. All right, and they're very busy eating their ice cream. So, guys, what's your favorite flavor so far? A good chunk of peanut butter fudge. A good chunk of peanut butter fudge. I know that's from Friendly's. Anyone else have something different? Oh, um, Owen has, um, um, mint. It's mint. Mint chocolate chip. And how about you? Mint chocolate chip. Okay, awesome. Jamil likes it so much, he's saving some for later. Awesome. And we have, what do we have to say about the Celtics tonight? Anyone? Go Celtics! There you go. Go Celtics! Yeah. We're here with Michael and Lexi, who are Scooper Bowl patrons here, clearly from the amount of cups they have, empty cups they have. Um, Michael, where are you from? I'm from East Boston. East Boston, Lexi? I'm from Lowell. Okay, so you came all the way down from Lowell. Cool, and how many years have you been coming to the Scooper Bowl? This is my fifth or sixth year coming to the Jimmy Fun Scooper Bowl. Okay. And it's my first time. time. So you're, you're a newbie. And what, how many, oh, well, I guess you we can count them. Have you had about, what, eight? I think I'm on nine right now. Not really sure. Nine or ten. And what's your favorite flavor so far? Um, I'd have to say lemon poppy from SoCo from Creamy. SoCo Cream. Okay. Right behind us. And how about you, Michael? That's uh, three out of these nine cups are the lemon poppy You're seeds. Kidding? Yeah. You're repeating the same yeah. flavor. Yeah. That's so, impressive. <laughs> it's really good. It must be good. All right, I'm gonna try that one. I'm here with Don, and he seems to have some sort of record going. At least, how many cups have you had? Twenty-one. Wow, twenty-one. I'm impressed. I was here 
early out. So. <laughs> Where'd you come from today, Don? Medford. 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 <laughs> so 21 cups, and what's been your favorite flavor so far? Um, I like the um, chocolate therapy and the... Chocolate therapy, that's, I heard the, about um, it. What do you call it? Dolce de leche. I'm here with Tiana, who works for SoCo Creamery, obviously. And where is SoCo um, headquartered? Where is it located? In Great Barrington, Massachusetts. It's oh. up in the Berkshires. Yeah. Okay, Great Barrington. Oh, that's neat. And how many years have you been working for SoCo? Is uh, this is my second year. Yep. Right. And it sounds like from what um, Tiana told us is that this is the second year that SoCo has come to the, uh, the Scooper Bowl. Yep. Tell us a little bit about the flavors that you brought this year. We brought salted caramel, lemon, lemon poppy seed, cake batter, and mission fig. We just talked to a couple ice cream lovers, and they said the lemon poppy is the best one here. Awesome. I like to hear that. So I'm here with Lee and a big group of, of school kids from Newton. What school are you from, Lee? We're the Cabot After School. Okay, after school program, and you guys are here to what? Eat ice cream? Yeah! yeah! So favorite flavor, go. <laughs> Dream. Oh, cool. What is it? Vanilla? It's like vanilla, caramel, and waffle cones. It, I like Amer it's Americone Dream, so I like that one too. Americone. What favorite? Um, my favorites are Americone Dream and Chocolate Therapy. Chocolate Therapy. Vanilla bean. Vanilla bean. Oh, you might like be a coffee person. Uh, I like the cotton candy with Pop Rocks. Cotton candy with pop rocks and splish splash. Splish splash. What's in the splish splash? I think it's raspberry and lemonade or something. Oh, okay. oh wow. That's crazy. Raspberry lemonade ice cream. Cool. Do you know what your favorite? Cake batter. Oh, that's a that's a new one. I haven't heard that one yet. How about you, Lee? I like the fig. The fig. I heard, yeah, SoCo, right? I'm here with Phil, one of the Jimmy Fun Scooper Bowl volunteers. And where'd you come from today, Phil? Oh, I came from Malden. Malden. Okay, not too far. And how many years have you been volunteering for the Scooper Bowl? This is my second year. Okay. And what? How did you get started with it? And you know, in the beginning. Well, uh, I have a friend, uh, Dick Dion, who uh, Dana Faber helped, and he's alive because of them today. So um, I do it for him. Yeah. That's and, great. And so he's kids, and for the kids too. Right. The kids that are being treated yeah, and cancer and... is very difficult because I have a brother who died of leukemia. So, Sorry. yep. Okay. So it's it's very a very personal reason that you're here yeah. for your friend and in honor of your brother. So yes. okay, great. Thank you so much for talking to us. This is Michael from Friendlies, and this is Friendlies' second year coming out to the Scooper Bowl. Michael, how many years have you volunteered? This is my first year. Okay, and where do you where did you come from today? Cape Cod. Oh, you drove up from the Cape. Awesome. Would you tell us a little bit about the flavors here that Friendlies is offering? Sure, we got four flavors here. The blue one is going to be the pop and rockin' our cotton candy. Oh. Okay, the red one, the pink one is strawberry. This one over here is going to be the hunk of chunk of peanut butter fudge. Hunk of chunk of peanut butter fudge. Okay, this one in the back here is called Graham Central Station. Oh, that's cute. Yes. Very, very clever. Graham Central Station. All right, awesome. Well, the hunk of hunk of peanut butter. It's hunk of chunk of peanut butter fudge. Hunk of chunk of peanut yeah, butter fudge. Uh, that's a good name. Yeah. Are you are you in charge of naming these ice creams? <laughs> no, no. Um, he is. Oh, that guy. All right. Do you have a personal connection to the Jimmy Fund at all, or? No, we're just here to help out. To help out. That's and right. Donate your time. That's what it is. And I'm I volunteering and helping out people. Yeah. And then paying it back. And I know that I'm sure that Dana Farber appreciates that you you know spending your time and having friendlies come down now for two years in a row. Thank you, Michael. It's an amazing event. We love this. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. This is Karen, and she works for Burn Dairy. And this is Burn Dairy's first year here first at the year. Bowl. Yes, it is. It's our first year. We're very excited to be here. Great. And where where are you located? We're where in you Syracuse, heading? New York. So you came a long way. We, 300 miles, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did. Okay. How did you get involved in coming to the Scooper Bowl? A uh, co-worker, ha, uh, his daughter has cancer, um, and he brought her to Dana Farber. And he heard about the Scooper Bowl, and obviously being a dairy, ice cream sale, we sell ice cream and milk, he uh, said, well, we need to get involved in this. So he uh, incorporated several of us from the dairy to come and help out. So that's what, we, that's what we're doing here. 
So we're happy to be here. I, yeah, it seems like it. Everyone's, you guys do seem excited. And do you think you'll come back again then? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. And would you just tell us quick, Karen, about the flavors that you have today? You we have cookie you? dough, holy cow, holy cow, which is um, uh, one of our flavors that we came up with. Yummy. It's a vanilla ice cream or peanut butter ice cream base with caramel swirl and peanut butter cups. And we have um, the, the cotton candy and the mint chocolate chip. Oh, that's classic. That's Which good. We um, actually sent uh, flavors to Dana-Farber and had the children pick out their favorite flavors, and that's the ones they came up with, so that's what we brought. Okay, so that you set them down ahead of time and yeah. had the kids pick their top four. Right. My vote. Oh, that's a great touch. Yep. So, well, thank you for talking You're to right. us, and enjoy the day. Thank you. You too. I'm here with Cassie and Dan from Fuse. Now, you guys aren't giving out ice cream, so what's the connection for you? We are here to give everyone a beverage to go along with their ice cream, and Fuse is um, a fun drink, and ice cream's fun. We have some spin art going on, too, so we just wanted to bring some more fun to the Scooper Bowl for the day. Okay, so this is your first year that Fuse has been here? Yes, yes, absolutely, yep. You know, where did you guys come from today? How far away? Not very far, just uh, Newton. Yeah, Newton, too. Awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, there's all diff there's several different flavors. I happen to love Fuse, so I'm going to try my um, my orange mango right now. But do you guys have a connection at all to the Jimmy Fund, or you just figured you'd kind of add something? We've done other events with them before, so we like to we like what it's about and like the support. Yeah, so. absolutely. It's a great cause, so it's good being a part of it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Thanks for your time. Enjoy Thank the you so much. Fuse. Okay, enjoy the fuse. Thank Bye now. So that just about does it. This is Jill Hindley here at the 2012 Jimmy Fun Scooper Bowl event. Back to you, Allison, in the studio. Thanks, Jill. With some of the hot and humid days we've been having here lately, I definitely wish I was out there with you. And remember, even if you didn't make it to the Scooper Bowl, you can still donate any time of year to the Jimmy Fund at www.jimmyfund.org. Next, we'll head across the country from Boston to Los Angeles, California, where our West Coast correspondent, Julie Marie, recently filed this report on the efforts of the Los Angeles Police Department to raise awareness of autism. Hi, I'm Julie Marie about Los Angeles, and we're here outside the Los Angeles Police Department training facility as the officers have the opportunity to work with autistic children and learn just how to deal with them out in the field. Community safety is everybody's responsibility. This was the main purpose of the event, where 91 autistic middle school students and over 100 police officers were teamed together at the annual Autism Awareness event. The students will get um, a folder, Mission Possible 2012, Obviously, it's a, a play on Mission Impossible, uh, but we think we can really do this and that we can make it better. And it might be just a template for what we do with different communities. There's all kinds of diversity in our communities, and this is one of them. And we want our officers to be as fully informed as possible. The officers and the children enjoyed a day of eating hot dogs together and then experienced five workstations, including... Officer Simon says. For the purpose of simplifying the idea of doing exactly what the police tell you to do when they tell you to do it. And that might be obvious to some people, but it's not necessarily obvious to people with autism. So we began by talking about rules they already follow and then making the connection that it's also a rule that you do what the police tell you. An ID me station where the children were fingerprinted at just one more example of what the police do. There was also an additional station called How Can the Police Help Me? where the children had role-playing cards that the police assisted in helping them solve problems. And the children were given the opportunity to sit in the police cars under the supervision of their police aides. And then at the end of the day, uh, they're leaving with a gift bag full of uh, numerous things and donations that from the community and we really want them to leave with a positive experience of law enforcement. The officers also benefited from the day. I knew very little just from experience with my family. I had an uncle that was autistic. But I didn't know too much the day what the day consisted of and I know that uh, 
you know, he's he's a handful. He runs around a lot, and he has a lot of fun, and he's high energy. So. Um, you know, I did hear, like, uh, that there's different types of autism. I just didn't know the specific types. So, you know, coming today, I'm learning a lot now. Here at the Autism Awareness event, children had the opportunity of working with a real-life police officer, which included getting their picture taken with them and showing them the tours of the trade, such as the Los Angeles police car and the emergency vehicles behind me. Go like that, and then you search with your left hand. So you got me, and you search me with your left hand. Exactly. I'm Julie Mui, about Los Angeles. Great report, Julie. And really, what an important cause. If anyone out there would like to contact the LAPD on its campaign, or if you'd like to contact one of us about any of the stories covered in today's show, you can always reach us at ad at basenettv.com. And while I'm talking about how to contact us, you can always keep up to date on all of Basenet TV's programming by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. You can follow all three at the handle BaseNet TV. BaseNet's Senior National News Coordinator, Holly Hurley, recently participated in and reported from the Reach the Beach Relay, a 200-mile-plus, 24-hour road relay race that took runners on a very scenic route from Wachusett Mountain all the way to the south coast of Massachusetts. Let's check in with Holly for her report. Hello, everybody. This is Holly Hurley. Remember me from way back in the day about Boston after dark. I'm here corresponding from the Reach the Beach Relay, which is a 200, that's right, guys, I said 100, a 200-mile relay from Wachusett Mountain all the way down to Horseneck Beach. I did it with 12 of my closest friends, and we had a blast. We're here at the finish line, and I am so excited. Congratulations to Spandexy's Midnight Runners and Allison, I am so happy to welcome you to BaseNet. This is what it's all about, lady. Have a great time. Thanks, Holly. Congratulations to all the runners. We in the studio are exhausted just thinking about a 24-hour relay race. And now for our final story, we're going to continue talking about exercise, but this time we're going to look at something that's fun for the entire family. Let's go down to Everett, Massachusetts, to Sky Zone Indoor Trampoline Park, where Jill Hindley is going to take a look at the fun you can have in this place, and perhaps try jumping herself. 
Jill? This is Jill Hindley for After Dark, and I'm here at Sky Zone Everett. Going to go check out the indoor trampoline park, maybe do a little bouncing off the walls, and uh, see how crazy I can get. I'm here with Chris Witeka, and he's the general manager at Sky Zone Everett. Hi, Chris. Hi. He's going to tell us a little bit about what they do here. So our biggest thing is open jump. It gives you access to our two dodgeball courts, our main court, and our foam pit. Um, our dodgeball court is basically we can do 10 on 10 or 12 on 12 for adults and basically just like your regular backyard dodgeball game with trampolines added in. So a completely new element. So All right, now we're over here in front of the foam pit. We have four lanes, two people at a time. We separate them on the foam pit so no one's jumping right next to each other. It is actually much harder to get out of than it looks. <laughs> How deep is the foam pit? Six feet deep. Two feet of thick foam and then on top of that is foam blocks. So. Now there's something you guys do here at Sky Zone called Skyrobics. Could you tell us a little bit about it? So Skyrobics is our fitness class that we have made up basically for the trampolines. It does everything from calisthenics on the trampolines to using uh, resistance bands on the trampolines to doing what we call rouncing, which is a mixture of running and bouncing. Oh, rouncing. Okay. So we made that up. And then uh, the claim to fame is that you can burn up to a thousand calories per hour. Uh, 30 minutes of running a treadmill is equal to 10 minutes of trampoline bouncing. So this is our main course. This is where we basically do open jump. Uh, people can just jump with their friends. They can try new tricks and also they can play basketball on our 13 foot basketball hoop. All right. Now we're in front of the dodgeball court. It looks pretty intense out there. Tell us what's going on. So right now we've got, uh, uh, I look like teenage kids playing, so we do always separate by size, so that's why we have two dodgeball courts. So just in case there's a bunch of adults that want to play and then, you know, kids that want to play, we do separate by size. So right now, these are looking like pretty competitive kids, so. Saturday nights, we have what's called Sky Jam. It's from 10 p.m. to midnight, it's 18 plus, um, and it basically includes an hour and a half of jumping, and then at the end of the hour and a half of jumping, we do pizza and drinks, and it's $15, so. I mean, we're, we're really going for like healthy fitness and sort of turning a spin on fitness instead of sitting behind you know, a treadmill running or running outside, it's more fun. So, a um, little bit about the history of Sky Zone. Yeah, so Sky Zone started as a sport actually in Las Vegas. Um, the sport sort of died out, so then the owners were thinking, well, what are we going to do with this indoor trampoline park that we have? So the neighborhood kids started coming around, like skateboarders and rollerbladers, like, hey, we want to try this. So I think they realized that, hey, it's a great opportunity for us, so the kids started paying to get in. And then they decided, let's open another facility, so they moved to St. Louis opened a facility there and then they started franchising the facilities out and Boston was actually the first facility uh, franchise. For Sky Zones across the country, how many are there? Where are they kind of spread out? There are 16 open currently and I believe there's 28 uh, franchises signed on at this moment. A lot of them are located centrally in the Midwest for some reason. That's interesting. Uh, on the East Coast right now, the only ones open, we have Buffalo, our two locations here and then uh, Orlando, Florida, so. Oh, okay. Wow. Right, these are my fancy trampoline jumping shoes that I put on. They're like bowling shoes except for they're high tops. <laughs> you get your sticker. You can jump 30-minute jump, 60-minute jump, etc. So I'm going to put my sticker on. Here we go. All right, here we go. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm going to go out there. Wow, that was fun, and I'm convinced I burned quite a few calories in my little jump stint there. So this is Jill Hindley from Sky Zone Everett. Allison, back to you. Thanks, Jill. That looked like a lot of fun. I'm sure it was quite a workout, though. So that's about it for the first episode of The Return of After Dark. Thanks so much again for joining us, and we hope you'll join us again next time for more of the interesting topics we'll cover for you. Before we go, I want to remind you that you can send us any comments or suggestions to ad at basenettv.com. 
And you can follow us at any time on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus at the handle BaseNet TV. So for Holly, Jill, Julie, and Jean, I'm Allison Lee, and we'll see you next time after dark. Thank you for watching After Dark. From Arlington and Boston, Massachusetts, to Los Angeles, New York, San Francisco, and everywhere in between, we have you covered. From the world headquarters of BaseNet Internet Television, I'm Gene White. On behalf of myself, our host Allison Lee, and the rest of our staff, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.